62-year-old grandma. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to uh, another day of Fox 5 Live here in Washington, D.C. You are looking at live pictures right now. Gorgeous, may I add, aerials of Long Beach, California. This is uh, a shark sighting off of Long Beach. We're getting these live pictures in right now. I think it's a gorgeous way to start the show. Look at that green water. I just want to be there. Apparently, about 70 uh, feet off the shore, they have seen about... Um, they have seen about three or four. Um, there have been about 10 shark sightings reported. Again, this is Long Beach, California. And uh, a paddleboarder apparently went up to one of the sharks. Very frightening scene. We're hearing from one of the reporters over there um, that this happened. And uh, they are sort of investigating what to do next. The shoreline has been um, blocked off and people have been told not to uh, continue to camp out there. It's been all shut down. Um, and this is uh, just these pictures of this shark sighting. So 
Yeah, just enjoy these beautiful aerial shots. Uh, see if you can see any more than one. Again, about 10 have been reported, but they've seen about three or four. And this is Long Beach, California. So if anybody uh, is familiar with it or is from there, give it a shout. Um, feel free to chat along on our YouTube stream here. We're going to bring you uh, the most updated live breaking news and events going on uh, across whatever we got for our sources for the stream. I want to tell you guys quickly that we are up... Um, and streaming till about noon today. We have a little bit, bit of a network break uh, until about 12.30 and then we'll be back on the air. So we'll let you guys know about that. But uh, for now, enjoy these pictures. I'm gonna see if we have any sound from any reporter out there in LA. Sounds like just static right now. But there you go, close up angle of that shark. Pretty awesome sight um, for now. So once again, guys, pretty clear picture. If you're just joining us, you're watching a live aerials, little close up there of this shark sighting off of Long Beach, California. The shoreline has been shut down. Uh, apparently about 10 people or 10 reports have come in of shark sightings and uh, three or four have been located and they're kind of honing in on this one right here. But just a gorgeous, wait for this uh, picture to kind of um, zoom out here, this wide shot angle of the shoreline. You can see more of Long Beach. California, what it looks like right now. It's about 8.30 California time. That's what you're watching uh, right now. We're going to bring it over to some other live news shortly. But um, hello from Washington, D.C. I'm Molly Navola bringing you uh, live news from our digital newsroom. If you're with us, what's up? We'll bring you over to a shot of the White House today on this rainy day. In Washington, that's what you're looking at. That's what it looks like live. That flag still blowing there in the breeze. Uh, we'll we'll head on into the White House press briefing as well at 1.30 today. And just a reminder that today's show will go uh, until about noon quickly. We're going to jump out for a network shutdown, and then we'll come back up at around 12.30 uh, to get you all that. You can see the rain there in the camera. It is raining in Washington, and it is pretty miserable here uh, what we got going on right now is the Senate uh, Intelligence Committee. They're hosting or they're having a hearing right now where the acting director, uh, Andrew McCabe of the FBI, is testifying, obviously following the whole sudden firing of former FBI director James Comey. So that's what's happening right now on Capitol Hill. You can kind of see a shot um, there, wider angle of what it looks like inside that room on Capitol Hill. I want to bring you uh, another cool story here. Check this out, guys. Oh, my goodness. This was exciting. Play this a new museum is opening in uh, New York City. It's a chocolate museum. Check it out. All that footage. Super exciting stuff for you chocolate lovers. You can actually view a artifacts here from the 
Um, it was founded by a chocolatier and pastry chef. He's going to speak on camera in just a moment here in this video. Um, it talks, this whole museum is based on the fact that chocolate was first produced as a drink uh, 5,000 years ago or so. And now it's so the there to what have, have here. enjoy the Then we grind chocolate. the nibs into a paste. Right here. So we take about 20 minutes. So we usually start and then we stop doing it. We're from Texas and in our grocery stores we have a, what they call a Mexican chocolate. Yes. I love to teach, I love to transfer the love that I have for chocolates and the knowledge that I have for chocolates to whoever wants to learn about it. So museums make the perfect sense to bring a museum here around the store. Basically, when you talk about liquid chocolates, you have to talk about the containers. And all those are cups with different story. But I think the most interesting one are the cups here on the right, the four cups that you see. They are called the moustache cup for men or women who wear moustache. At that time, when you drink the hot chocolates, because there is this little ridge here, the chocolate doesn't go to heat your moustache. This hot chocolate was made with a molinillo that creates a form on top of the chocolate. So if you have a moustache, that form going to go all over your moustache. So that protects it. So guys, pretty interesting stuff. Apparently uh, tickets cost around 10 to $15 and this actually opened in March. So now we're just getting a little more information about it and what it looks like. I definitely want to pay it a visit. Super cool to me, this type of museum, if you're interested in the arts and or food and chocolate. You still ferment the beans, you still uh, roast them, you still remove the shell and get the nibs, and you still have to grind that, mix it with sugar. But because now we have machine, the chocolate is a lot smoother, we can really remove all the acidity, the flavor is completely different. It's actually way better now. So you see, I just fill the cavity, otherwise I will not do it. So, you see you. So guys, then you, you want to close the chocolate. all those cavities here. Oh my God. That's it. People ask me, what is the best chocolate? And I always tell them, the best chocolate is the chocolate that you love. The chocolate that remind you your childhood the chocolate that talk to you. It doesn't matter if it's 80% cocoa content, 60% cocoa content, if it's European or American, it doesn't matter. It's something that you have to enjoy. So that's what it looks like here in New York City. That's the entrance. Uh, you can see, I'm just take this off. And um, it is definitely, um, people are flocking there in New York City. And if you're a chocolate fan, Definitely uh, a cool thing to check out. I love, I actually recently went to a chocolate festival here in Washington, uh, and it was really, really a cool experience. Um, you could try all different types of chocolate from all over the world. A lot of it, obviously local. Um, they really uh, pride themselves on locally sourced um, food items and of course pastries, including chocolate, um, as sort of a special niche product um, of sorts. Okay, I wanna bring your attention to another video. Check out this segment um, from earlier this morning. We had it on our morning show, and it actually relates to uh, something very topical, um, including, actually, I'll flash you this picture again one more time, Long Beach. So are you guys ready for the summer? We're getting ready for a bikini body season, beach body season, and one of our contributors, Sarah Frazier, who I love so much, um, is always talking about super open, frank topics. She's very candid um, and real, and I love this segment about getting ready uh, for summer, getting your body ready for summer, and she had a very special... Um, sort of reveal on this morning's morning show. So check out uh, this video. Beach ready, or do you think you need to hit the gym or maybe run like seven miles a day? And what is beach body ready anyway? All right guys, we're fixing a little technical difficulty for one second. So let me work on this. And while I get that ready, um, we're going to bring it over to Capitol Hill, where the uh, Senate Intelligence Committee is having uh, the current acting director of the FBI, uh, McCabe, testify 
in front of them. You'll see a lot of familiar faces, senators and whatnot uh, on this committee questioning McCabe in the wake of the firing of James Comey. Now, one of our reporters, Tom Fitzgerald, he's on that story today to sort of follow what becomes of this fallout with the sudden firing of the FBI director. Um, let's jump over to live picture right now in uh, on the Senate floor of the Senate Intelligence Committee. The FBI is doing to be able to interdict, to be able to engage how many of those are American, how many of those are international, and what we can do to be able to stop the movement of narcotics through our mail system. Yeah, yes, sir. So um, I, it's a, a great question and one that we spend a great deal of time on. As you know, the traffic of illegal narcotics uh, is something that we, along with our partners at the DEA and other law, federal, state, and local law enforcement partners have focused on for many years. We've had uh, great success, but the issue, the threat continues to change, continues to develop, and, uh, and confront us in new ways. The uh, profusion of uh, illegal online pharmacies is certainly one of those ways, and quite frankly, it's something that we are uh, learning more about, spending more time on uh, every day. Well, I'm glad that it is highlighted in the report with tens of thousands of these pharmacies that are out there in the distribution systems. It's no longer a drug dealer on the corner anymore. They just deliver it to your house now, and there, there's a whole different set of issues that we aggressively need to address on this. Dr Director Coates, I have, I have a, a question for you. We've talked often about a cyber doctrine. Uh, and it's one of the issues that keeps being raised that uh, other nations and nation states and, and, and actors need to understand what our boundaries are and how we're going to do this. This seems to be talked to death. Uh, and everyone that I raise it with says, yes, it needs to occur. What I need to know is who has the ball on leading out to make sure a year from now we're not talking about we need to get a cyber doctrine. I guess specifically, when we do this hearing next year, who should we hold accountable to have cyber doctrine? Well, that's a very good question. I think all of us would agree we need a cyber doctrine uh, because clearly it is one of the top, uh, if not the number one threat to, to, uh, today that we're dealing with. Um, as you know, the president uh, uh, tasked uh, an effort uh, under the direction of uh, former uh, Mayor Giuliani uh, with this. Uh, that has not led to a conclusion at this particular point in time. I don't have the details on that. Um, I would agree with you, however, that uh, this is a threat that uh, our policymakers uh, need to uh, need to address. Uh, I'm hoping that when we are here next year, we will have a, uh, a solid response to your question. But at this particular point in time, Frankly, given the proliferation of issues that we're trying to deal with, uh, um, it's, all, it's almost overwhelming. And it is, and, that, and that's been our hands concern around all, all of them. There's just so many things that are flying around. This keeps getting left, and it has been for years, uh, been left. And what we need to try to figure out is how do we actually find out who's got the ball <clears throat> and who do we hold to account to be able to help us work through this, or is this something that we need to be able to work through? I, I noticed as I read through your report, which was excellent, by the way, and all the worldwide threats, Every single section of your report, every section of it, had a section on Iran. Every part of it, that there was a threat. In fact, in one section of it, you wrote, Iran continues to be the foremost state sponsor of terrorism. Whether it was cyber, whether it is active terrorism, whether it's involvement in every different nefarious action, it seems to always circle back to Iran at some point. In some well, you guys are watching, um, actually, is so a Senate Select Committee is, on Intelligence, and uh, this committee is featuring, our, m multiple people are here Just testifying, um, including NSA Director Admiral Mike Rogers. Um, like I said, the acting director right now of the FBI, Andrew McCabe, is there. Um, CIA Director is there as well. So we're hearing from a lot of different faces. This is going on all day. We're going to kind of jump in and out of that, but I finally um, was able to get up the video that I wanted to show you from this morning. Talking about those beach bodies, guys, check it out. There's the beach and there's the shark as well. This is the shark sighting off of Long Beach, if you're just joining us. Just a live picture, aerial picture of a shark sighting. There have been a couple reported, about three or four. Um, and you can kind of see as, as this shot, uh, shot widens, there's a few boats out there to track the shark, this sh uh, the beach has been shut down, um, and they are on big, high shark alert over there in Long Beach. That's um, aerials from our sister station out there in Los Angeles. And speaking of the beach, I'm going to show you this segment quickly from 
our morning show um, about getting your beach body ready, getting your bikini body ready. What does it mean? What does it mean to you? Um, what does um, mindful eating mean and whatnot? This is all from Sarah Fraser, one of our contributors, who is amazing. Check out uh, this little segment. Season because Memorial Day is two weeks away. So, is your body beach ready, or do you think you need to hit the gym or maybe run like seven miles a day? And what is beach body ready anyway? Fox Five contributor Sarah Frazier is here to talk all about where your bikini body doesn't have to be perfect. I love that message. You do. Of course. Thank you. But let's be honest. Oh, please! I put it all out there. So, where do you want to start? Well, we kind of want it to be a little perfect. Um, yeah, we do. And, you know, my journey, I, as we're here to talk about this morning, I've yeah. posted on my blog, and I've been doing it for a couple years, um, is I never even wore a bikini until I was 32 years old because right. I hated my body and the way I looked. What was the switch then? What switch? Well, when I was trying, this, honestly, Fox 5, because, y you know, I've been a contributor here for like seven years. Right. When I first started, I was probably about 25 pounds, 30 pounds heavier than I am now on the air. And I would get tweets from people who would say, oh, my God, you'd be so pretty if you lost 20 pounds. And so that hurtful. messed with me so much. But it also was a gift because my entire life, since I was 12 years old, I've been on a diet. Mm -hmm. I've done everything. Weight Watchers, Kashi Go Lean, Slim Fest, and nothing worked. I've gained and lost 150 pounds, and I finally had had it because I hated my body so much, even though it was healthy and supporting me and vibrant. And I found a great mindful eating and living therapist in Tacoma Park. You've talked about this before. Oh, my What's God, I love here? So is it just, as it sounds, just changing what to get well, there? Well, with mindful eating... Truly, if we are in tune with our bodies, our bodies will tell us what we want to eat and we'll find our natural weight. Sometimes mine say, Twinkie. You can have a Twinkie, okay. but we really only need one or two bites. But we override those messages all the time because we're busy, we're stressed, we have tough relationships, then right. we're eating in the car. So a couple years ago, I wore my bikini live here and I got it on again today. I'm going to well, rock do the it. reveal later. Okay, we'll reveal it. Um, because my whole Unless message. You is this? I spent years trying to get on the bikini diet, and you I call those ridiculous. I think a bikini diet is the most insane thing I've ever heard of. Right. We deprive ourselves. We go to all these exercise classes to try and look good in two tiny pieces of cloth, mm -hmm. and then even when we, even when we're working out and doing a great job with our bodies, we still don't think that we're good enough. So my thing is this: just put the bikini on. Right. Just go right. because. It's really so much a mindset. And once you just begin to own your body and realize, hey, look, I don't care. I have cellulite. I have all those things. But you know what? I'm healthy. Yes. I'm grateful to be here. And that's the important part. You know what's funny is you talk about, um, and everybody can relate, I don't want to, don't, don't get me in the picture or let me hide behind something for the picture. And then when you look back, you realize how much you missed out on. What I also realize is when I look back at pictures from like 10 years ago, I remember thinking, oh, I cannot get into this bikini or I don't like how this looks. And I'm like, I looked great. It's right? right. So like, how can we, in your opinion, get that I look great mentality for the day and the moment that we're in? Because chances are, I mean, you do, you're you rock who you are. How do you get that mindset? You, I think you have to catch that voice in your head. You have to just start being aware of that voice. And every time it goes, Oh God, I, I'm not pretty enough. I'm right. not thin enough. I think you go, no, you know what? I'm good the way I am. And if I never lose a pound, if I don't look any different, you know what? I'm good. Okay. And I think you just challenge yourself. Put the bikini on and go. So we're seeing pictures there as you, uh, oh, I was hoping it would stay there. Um, we're seeing pictures of when you were, was that you at your heaviest, do you think, there? With yeah, the that was, on? okay, good. The there bikini you, bottoms didn't come off. Right. I was concerned. I was like, oh, God, if those come off, Fox will have another kind of show. A hit on their hands. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was probably my heaviest when I was in college. Okay. So I was probably close to 190, and I probably, I don't even own a scale anymore. Yeah. But I'd say maybe now I weigh like 135. First time you wore a bikini like, is everything tucked and in? you are rocking it today. Just put it on. Just put it on. And put you know it what? On. When I see people at the beach and I think, wow, that's not a perfect, uh, and I admire those people so much. Moms with on. your stretch marks of warrior badges. I got them. You want to zoom in, Austin? I no. love it so much. <laughs> if, if we could only be as it. empowered as Sarah Frazier today. But maybe this has helped somebody. It's helped me. It took me years to get here. Tell me, let me so stand up. don't beat yourself up. I want you. I want to challenge you. Next year, will you wear one on Heck the airways with no, me? No, but not? I love you anyway. People love you. Who's going to take me seriously the next day? See, they. Oh, can, that's you true. Know what I mean. All right, all right, Tucker, over to you. <laughs>
Sarah, thank you. You know, I've been... So Allison, Allison says no, she won't wear one on the air. Um, we're going to flash it back, guys, to Long Beach, take a look at these pictures. Before, remember, we are going dark at around noon, um, just for a quick half hour. <laughs> hey guys, what's up? Uh, we're joining you here in the Washington DC newsroom. You're looking at live pictures of uh, a shark sighting off of Long Beach. Now this is like 70 to 80 feet off the beach and they've actually shut down that whole side of the beach. You can't really see until they go with the wide shot. But again, if you're just joining us, uh, we're getting these live aerials in from Los Angeles. Um, apparently like 10 people have reported shark sightings or they've reported actually rather 10 sharks but they found about um, a couple or three or four. They're zooming in on one there. I think the, the chopper will sort of um, go around the beach here to see what he can see. But anyway, just checking in with you uh, here. You can see more of a wide shot there of the beach and you can see that it's shut down. There's nobody there. Um, so this is Long Beach, California. It's like almost 9 a.m over there um, and you are watching Fox 5 Live out of Washington, D.C. We're going to be going dark uh, just in a few minutes for the noon hour just as we do a network reset and then we're going to be coming back up at around 1230. So join us then. We're going to have some cool live news for you from Capitol Hill and Washington, D.C. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. Oh, I'm definitely. It's like always. It's been for like five years plus, but I'm just. I just. Oh, um, wait. Covert campaign. Director Casey summarized this extraordinary effort in a paper he sent to Bush, Schultz, Weinberger, and Clark on January 18, 1983. We later published it and circulated it widely within the government and to the Allies, and finally provided an unclassified version for the public to use. End quote. I'd like to thank So guys, you're CIA watching a special uh, Senate Select Committee on Intelligence. Uh, a and lot of people have gathered here to testify and talk, including the acting the director of the FBI right now, Andrew McCabe, who actually, just breaking NATO news, said, uh, has been quoted to have I said uh, in this committee, which I didn't have on air uh, earlier, that uh, James Comey had not the lost the confidence the of his people. He had broad support within the FBI. So just some interesting stuff coming out of this uh, committee hearing. We'll continue to bring you some breaking um, quotations out of this event and other news that comes out of it and kind of jump in and out of this committee meeting throughout the day. Um, we are going to um, bring you the White House press briefing today, of course, with Sarah Huckabee Sanders leading 
breaking the pack as well as any other breaking news that we have coming in on our sources. So once again, I'm Molly here in the Washington, D.C. digital newsroom at Fox 5 D.C. And you're just checking out on your lunch break, hopefully, um, to relax and sit back and just check out what's happening live across the world as you uh, watch our digital feed. So thanks for joining us. We'll pop back.